so towering, so new, so huge. About 20 million people live in the megalopolis on the Huangpo River. Here, explosive growth is causing an explosion of problems. Traffic, waste removal, and water supplies, just to name a few. The World Fair in Shanghai aims to grapple with these problems. Its motto is, better city, better life. The International Expo Pavilion Urban Planet, planned by the German communications and design studio Triad, focuses on the flight from the countryside, urbanization and energy consumption in the megacities. Just imagine in the next 30 years between 400 and 450 million Chinese will move from rural areas into cities that don't even exist yet. Displays in the pavilion underscore the contradiction between high-tech possibilities and global reality. Megacities, a field of tension between attractive and nightmarish conditions. And especially in the developing world, between exploitation and irresponsibility at the top and poverty and fatalism at the bottom. The manager of the Urban Planet Pavilion, Volker Klingenburg, wants to shock the expected 70 million Chinese visitors into doing some serious thinking. We initially wanted to make it much more drastic, but they told us this is drastic enough for the Chinese who will be visiting, and we shouldn't frighten them even more. Shanghai is China's biggest center of finance and business. The city's population has almost tripled since the 1990s. Until recently, old neighborhoods were torn down to make way for new skyscrapers. But the city government has meanwhile realized that an international trade center has more to offer than office buildings. This former industrial area by the river has been turned into the grounds of the expo. At its center, the Chinese pavilion, in imperial red, towers over everything else. We accompanied city planner Lu Xin to one of the renovated quarters of the old city. She takes a critical view of the rapid expansion of the city and the region as a whole. Shanghai is coalescing with smaller cities that surround it, which are also growing. That may be good for economic development, but it's questionable in terms of sustainable urban development and ecology. Those are precisely the questions asked at AS&P, one of the many German architecture and city planning firms working in China. The strength of the German planners lies in the fact that they combine urban planning with ecological and strategic awareness. Johannes Dell, meanwhile, knows Shanghai like the back of his hand, including its contradictions. For example, the wealthy city authorities might be injecting funds into infrastructure investment, but ecological awareness is still not enough of a priority. If growth in China continues at the same level of resource consumption, China will have to put a 500 megawatt power plant online every five days. And at the moment, that's precisely what it's doing. AS&P has been planning and building in Shanghai for a long time. The team of city planners and architects once experienced a phase when the Chinese wanted buildings to look European. But in recent years, things have been different. There's a lot of talk about eco-cities, about low carbon, green development, and zero energy. Mostly this is just lip service, but my impression is that in China, the politicians, the administrators, and the companies that produce the necessary technology are all on the starting blocks. Back to the Expo Pavilion Urban Planet, which showcases ideas and future visions for a new approach to a valuable resource, water. Yeah. 
The overall mood may be rather pessimistic, but some of the innovations inspire hope. If you go to Africa, to Nigeria, or to Sao Paulo, or Mexico City, or Mumbai, if you take a look at these megacities, you have trouble believing in solutions anymore. You can only see the problems. 13 million people live in or near Lagos, three quarters of them in slums. Of the 20 million people in Sao Paulo, about 8 million live in favelas. Cairo has 16 million residents plus 3 million commuters a day. There's no requirement to register, no control on people moving to the city, just burgeoning growth. China is different. Shanghai spent $500 million on refurbishing the riverbank promenade. The capacity of the subway network was quadrupled in preparation for the expo. Old neighborhoods are no longer torn down without a thought. Shanghai and other economically strong Chinese megacities believe growth can be controlled. The cities are developing incredibly fast. But nevertheless, I think they're managing the accompanying problems fairly well. Shanghai is a good example. Over the last year and a half or two years, you can clearly see how the city has been preparing for Expo, how streets and certain parts of the city have changed for the better. This is helping people identify with their city, and that's also important socio-culturally and politically because it encourages a sense of citizenship. And at some point, that will have feedback effects on how the city is governed and administered. It's a hope that's not unfounded. And Li Xin shares it. But she's also aware of the seamy underside, the lack of housing, the forced resettlement, the misery of the migrant workers who are building Shanghai.